So what's going on guys? Welcome to Chaos Nutrition, along with Muscle Sport Mag, my boy Joe Piataro, and uh, my boy the, the godfather of chaos. Look, I'm freezing my ass off so I'm still wearing a little jacket here. Welcome to the Chaos Nutrition, Muscle Sport Mag, old school training show eight. I'm doing a thing here. Miss Jerry Ward, because they make this square like Jerry Ward would say. Hold on. There you go. Uh, need help. Boy, do I need help. Um, okay, guys, so we're back. All right, we're going to be doing a couple of videos here for uh, old school training, and I'm glad you guys are here. And I'm going to I'm gonna wet your appetite a little bit. Just gonna, I'm going to give you a little teaser, a little cock teaser right here for you old school guys. For you old school guys. I'm going to, look, let me push this magazine here. Wait, I'm going to, I'll get to this in a second right here. This is muscle digest but we're gonna get to this in a second before I I'm gonna show you why but before I get to this I'm gonna cock tease you guys a little bit ready and I got a lot of older magazines than this we're gonna talk about not today but you know this is just a cock tease now this right here is Joe Weeders muscle builder and this is March of 1959 yes 1959 there it is look at that 1959, right there. Look at that. Joe Weeders, Muscle Builder. Now, look. Let me show you. Look, 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 look right here. Look, ready? Zoom in on that, baby. Right there, look. Okay? That's Joe Weeder. Okay? 1959. There's your, there's your date right there. 1959, Joe Weeders. Let's look at the back really fast. The fake picture of Joe Weeders even back then. Okay? Alright, Joe Weeders. Look at this. Who are these people? Let me first, wait, let me first see if there's anybody famous right here. Oh, yeah. Clarence Ross. Leo Robert. Uh, well, I don't know who the hell this guy is. Julia Damon. Uh, I can't really see too well without, like, reading glasses because I'm old. But right there, look, dude. That's Clar uh, Clarence Ross, and then right here is Leo Robert. Now, check it out. Okay, look. Those guys were, were considered great bodybuilders back then, okay? And these guys, I don't know how the hell this guy got on there, but whatever. Okay? Now, look at the back. That's back when your grandfather, when I was, well, I wasn't born. I was just, I was in my mother's belly, but in 1959, but here, right here, okay? Right here. When my father would have been younger, he wasn't young, he was already in his 30s, but there you go, right there, look, right there, that's with barbells and dumbbells and stuff, and look, okay, let's uh, uh, try short range power movements, that's your big advertisement right there, but look, that's your bodybuilder and the girl, right there, look at that. Now, if you're going to ask me who that is, I'll tell you who it is, it doesn't say on the cover, let me, give me a second here. It does the on the cover. Okay, on the cover. Oh, that's Tom Sansone. Okay, so that's Tom Sansone. Okay, old school bodybuilder right there. Look at that. Okay, now let's look in here. Let's let's let's, let's see what they got. Okay, once again here they have actually have a drawing. This is like a, a drawing of well of weed or stuff. I don't want to break the, the cover. Hold on. This is in great shape. This magazine. Okay, got a. Oh shit, like right here, look, you got the supplement ads. Even back then, look at the supplement ad. Look at, look at, even back then, they're trying to sell supplements. That's, for them, that's like a high-tech ad. Look at the bottles and everything. Now, wait a minute, guys, relax. I gotta go through the, ah. Oh. Here we go. Look at it. <laughs> There's our boy, Vince, right there, look. 
Right there. Can you see that? Can you see that? It's Vince Geronda. What is it saying about him? I can't even see. I, I can't see shit. I can't even read that, so forget it. I think that's Vince Geronda. I can't even see. Dude, I... I gotta, I gotta wear uh, reading glasses. I, I can't read it all. But look at this guy. What the hell? Anyway, but these are the kind of bodies from back then. You know what I mean? Now hold on. Hold on. Super Protein ninety. Look at the ads. Look at this ad. Look. Wait. Get this ad. Check this out. Look at this. Look what the guy looks like. Look. Wait, I'll, I'll, I'll back up. Give me a second, okay? But look. Look at this guys. Look what they look like. Now watch. Super Pro ninety. This is the protein powder. Everything was Joe Weeder down there. Let's get to some of the bodybuilders here. Some of the good guys. Look, look how... 19, tell me this doesn't look like 1950s right here. Look at this guy. He left the weights. Okay? But this is how the bodybuilding magazines used to be back then. Okay? Is that anybody we know? No. Um, who is this? I can't... Hey guys, I'm sorry. Give me a second. <laughs> See, I need a fucking glasses. I should. I know what you're thinking. Oh, this is Armin Tanny. Okay, Armin Tanny. I remember him, Vic Tanny. Look, that looks pretty good. Not for nothing. Most of these guys were natural guys. I know what you say. Armin Tanny was not natural. Yeah, I think he might have been. Okay, relax. 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 The, listen, these guys trained. When I was younger, guys trained. You know, these guys today, they all look heavy, but they're so juiced up. Oh, shit. Joe Weider changed my life. By Clem. Look at this fucking guy. By Clem. His name is Clem. C-L-E-M. Post, uh, post, whatever the fuck. You read it yourself. Anyway, look. He started out as a fat bastard. Look at that. Fat bastard. Look at that. Look at that gut. Okay, there he is. All right. That's, he says, Joe Weider. See, Joe, even back then, Joe Weider was a very, you know, Joe Weider changed my life. But here, there he is, with the, sucking in the gut right there. Look at that. Even back then, Joe Weider, I love Joe Weider. I met Joe Weider many times. Joe Weider right there changed my life. Look at that. Went from that, from this, fat fuck. Okay, look at the gut, to that. Okay? And he, thanks, Joe Weider. Even back then, Joe Weider was doing that shit. And here's his name, in case you guys are wondering. Clem, whatever. Okay? Simmer down. This is 1950s. Hold on. Let me pull it up. I can't see. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Valentino. You should have been prepared. You should have read all this stuff. Had it all laid out. That's not the way Valentino operates. That wouldn't be Valentino if that was me. Sets and repetitions. We're going to talk a little bit about this in a bit. Okay? Sets and repetitions. All right, this is like one of the articles, sets and repetitions, okay? And then you got the bodybuilder here. I'm not sure who that is. Wait, hold on. I'll show it to you again. Here, sim it down, okay? Of course, all the shadows make them look more built. But uh, we used to have a guy in the gym that used to do it. He used to look for the right shadow. And he, you know, and he was, he just, he wasn't even, look. Look at that guy. And the guy I'm talking about was fat and wasn't even built like that. And he tried to make himself look like he had separation because he would do shit like that. Um, hold on. Let me find a good guy here for you. Remember? <laughs> Thank you, Blue Dad. Does it? Eugene Sandow with his naked ass. Okay. Um, hold on. What's the name of that? Uh, the Immortal Eugene Sandow. It's a little article about him. The Immortal Eugene Sandow. But look at this paper, bro. Look at This is like yellowed, almost like... You know the kind of paper this is. I don't know what the hell how the hell to tell you this. Hold on, let me let me let me show you more. Hold on, hold on, simmer down, okay? Relax, give me a break. I want to uh, weight gain. You know what I mean? The weight gain. This is weight gain. Weight. You know what I mean? The weight gain. Hold on. It's hard for me to. Um, wait, let me see. How much did this set look? Look, here's the Joe Weider big set, okay? And he's selling it. Here's the prices and everything. I know some of you are like, wait, hold up, you're going too fast. Just fucking pause the goddamn video. I can't, I can't sit here like a momo and do that shit. Hold on. I'm trying to find if we see anybody really famous in here. Okay. Um, 
But this guy's got nice builds right here. You know, I'm telling you, they're natural. You can see, especially this one guy right here, you can see that he's a natural guy back then. Okay? This is, remember, this guy's, this is 1959. If this guy was, this guy now would be almost 100 years old. Okay, look at, look at that guy. Nice build, right? Right? A little thin on the legs. But a nice build. You know what it is? Back then, guys, where is it? Hold on, did I have them right here? It, some of them used to use the leg shoe. You know what I'm saying? I want to see if anybody's showing it. Oh, look, like right here, they're showing you, like, different ways to... The leg power here. Harness, harness the power. Like right, ready? Like this is the article right there. That's the article. Look how they have them doing it. Look, they have them fucking squatting with a barbell between the legs. Look, wait, hold on. Okay, I can't see what the fuck I'm showing you. Can you see that? Look, right there. Harness the power. Meanwhile, they want you to squat with a barbell with a strap, a barbell and a strap between your legs. Look, see that? Harness the power. Dude, if nobody would do that today. That's insane. All right. But the, this is a 1950. Like, here's a guy right here. I don't know who he is. You know, Joe Mataraz. I know you guys like when I say that. Joe Mataraz. Okay. Right there. I have no idea who he is. We don't know. It's not nobody famous. But anyway, this is Muscle Builder. It's, you know, not bad. It's, I got a, smells like garage. Uh. I got a paper smell and fetish, so let's look at this one for a second. Let me see how I'm doing a time. All right, hold on. This is the Muscle Digest I was telling you about. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this one. Okay, that's Rufus Howard right there. He just won, yeah, he just won the Mr. America in 1982. This is 1982. All right, look at him. He was a big guy. I remember Rufus Howard. I think I talked about him once before. Um... But there's a guy in here. So this is the, called the Mr. America Special. Okay? The Mr. America Special. But there's a young young guy in his magazine who was just trying to win a big show. And his, I know the story because I know him and he, very well. He was at my house here. And uh, I got to tell you something. His wife, would, he would call his wife all the time and they would be talking and everything. And his wife... Uh, his wife's the one who got him into bodybuilding. He was playing football and everything, and she signed him up for a show, and he wasn't going to do it. And she said, no, you just do it, you know, because he was hurt. I think he hurt his knee or something, he told me, or whatever. So he decided, I'll try it out. And he won. He had no idea what he was doing. Here he is right here. Ah, wrong bodybuilder. <laughs> a young, right there, okay? A young Lee Haney. Now, let me see. I think he... Um, he became the American bodybuilding champion. Here he is, right here. So while Rufus Howard won that year, that's Lee Haney, right there, okay? And that's, okay, right there, there you go. That's the National Bodybuilding Championships, which is the Nationals. Hold on. Give me a fucking break here for a second. Well, that's the American Bodybuilding Championships. Okay, so, uh, and here is, uh, I remember this guy. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. It's James Gilbray. Right. Dale Rupplinger. Somebody just asked me about him recently. Dale Rupplinger. I like this guy right there. Okay? I like this guy. Dale Rupplinger. was a big guy. I met him at the Night of the Champions. A nice guy, too. Right here. And then who it was that? Jose Maldonado. Right there. Look at Was it? Is that his name, Jose Maldonado? Let me look. Ready? Right there. Remember him? Maldonado? Is that Jose Maldonado? No, Moses Maldonado. Same shit. Right? Moses Maldonado. Okay? Right there. I could have sworn his name was Jose. Oh, my God. Look at all these pictures. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to show you this. Hold on. This is Bob Paris. Oh my God! Look at these pictures. Oh God! Go! Oh, you old school guys gonna love this. Bob Paris. Give me a second. Bob Paris. Wait a minute, guys. Hold on. Matt Mendenhall. And look at it, Benny Poda. I gotta show you. Remember Benny Poda? Hold on. Let me let me do it like this. Ready? 
Look, guys, you guys remember Benny, where is he? Right there, Benny Pota. Remember that guy? Benny Pota, Benny, was it Benny the Beast Pota or whatever the hell it was? Okay, right there, Benny Pota. He was a monster, but wait a minute. Look at this, look at this picture right here. That's Matt Mendenhall. And on this side of him, no, right here, that's, uh, who's the other guy? Uh, that's, what's his name? Bob Paris. Look at it. Matt Mendenhall. Bob Paris, right there. Dude, how can you fucking, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's more here, guys. Mike Christian against Bob Paris. This is all 1982. That's Mike Christian in the middle and then Bob Paris next to him. Look at him. Look at him. That, look at it. And if you all know Mike Christian, which I know Mike Christian very well, was in his house in, in 1981. In, in uh, I knew him when he looked like that. He was, not, he was not nearly as big as the monster. The monster that he became. The monster. Hold on. And look at it. Here's Tim Belknap. I can't see. I don't know if that's fucking Bob Paris or not. But hey, look at Tim Belknap, the Momo. Right. Wait, there he is. Right there. Okay. Tim Belknap. Right there. Okay, he really doesn't look that good to me right there. Now, he, he was a, he was a Momo. Hold on, let me see if there's any other good dude. I love these old because I love all these old guys. You know what I mean? These are the guys that are the. What is that guy, Yarborough? Ah, uh, I forgot his fucking first name. But anyway, right there, look at, look at. I love those old school guys, man. How could you not like that? You old school guys, my my brothers and I are from fucking way back. You know, you guys know you love that shit. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me see if there's any other. Yeah, Lee Haney was young there. Imagine that, young Lee Haney. Here's Belknap here. Look, Tim Belknap right there. Okay, that's Belknap. Now hold on, sim it down. Give me a fucking second, will you? Um, I can't, sorry, I gotta pull the goddamn glasses off. You might say, why are you wearing a glass? Because I can't see with my eyes. Oh, shit, Jerry Scalisi. I know Jerry, that was a long time ago, because we're both Bob Gruskin guys. Remember Jerry Scalisi right there? Oh, shit, New York guys, right there. New York, man. Right there, look. That's Jerry, Sc ah! That's Jerry Scalisi right there. Hey, Jerry Scalisi. Dude, he was a monster. Holy shit. Wait, did I point to the right guy? Shit, wait a minute. I can't see what I'm doing here. Yeah. Okay, and then Bob Paris, and then Matt Mendenhall right next to him. Holy shit. Men Matt Mendenhall, Bob Paris, and Jerry Scalise. That's a, that's a lineup right there. Look at that. Look at that. That's Mendenhall in the middle. Dude, Matt Mendenhall. I met him. My God. He was big. He was a good-looking kid. He had fucking shoulders were like unbelievably broad. Let me see. Oh shit! Here's the guy that I talked about in a video that I did on my channel. If you go to my channel, see this is Mike Torsha. Okay, I kind of I didn't grow up with Mike. I grew up in a couple towns by him, but he, I used to idolize him when I was a kid because he was a teenager and I was a teenager. He's a little bit older than me. Okay, so I was a young teenager when I was like 16. He, was, he won like the Teenage America and all that stuff. And he used to work in a gym that I worked at. So that's how I got to know him really well. He was like a mentor to me. Mike Torsh was a great bodybuilder, man. I love that guy. Great, great bodybuilder. Let's see. Um, oh, God. Eugene Pinky. Hold on. Hold on. Re give me a second, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Relax. Give me a fucking second here, guys. I'm trying to find you guys some good guys here. Hold on. Oh, my Christian looks good here. Yeah, look, right, right. That's my Christian right there. In the, in the inside, right there. You see him? Wait a minute. Got to get that glare off there, man. My Christian. Right there. Okay. It's hard. It's in the fold. Oh, fuck. That was, was that my... Here, right here. This guy, right here. Did I show you the right guy? <laughs> Shut up. Right there. That's my Christian. Look at him. He looked good there. He looked good there. He looked very good. Um, let me see if there's anybody else you guys might remember. Hold on, there's a few here, but, uh... Hold on, relax, give me a second. We're having fun here. Look at these guys. Dude, this is old school. You you young guys are watching this guy. What the fuck, you're boring the shit out of me. But the old school guys like, oh, fuck, I remember him. You know, somebody asked me, I don't know which one of you guys. I, I don't know if I... 
uh, I meant to, I, sometimes I go to try to, you know, like I try to answer everybody. But sometimes I'll go to answer somebody that doesn't go through. Somebody asked me about Dave Spector. Okay, so if you're the guy that asked me about Dave Spector, yeah, I do remember him. Blondish hair, little mustache. I do remember, I never met him. But I remember him from the magazines. Now, hold on. Okay, we got more guys here, guys. All right, hold on. All right, do you remember, here's Charles Glass, guys, right here, and right next to him is Chuck Williams. Remember those two guys? Right there. Look, Charles Glass, where my finger is, and then Chuck Williams right next to him. All right? Can you see them? Charles Glass right here. Right there, that's Charles Glass, dude. The famous Charles Glass, the, the trainer that trains all the guys today. And then Chuck Williams right next to him. Charles Glass right there. And then Chuck Williams right there. I know a lot of you guys remember. Oh, I remember Chuck Williams. And Charles Glass was a good bodybuilder, guys. Okay, he was a very good bodybuilder. Uh, Rufus Howard's in the middle here. Hold on, let me see if there's anybody else. We gotta get to the talking here. Oh, I remember this guy, Pat Navy. I used to like him. He was always on a, right there, Pat Navy. Remember him? Pat Navy, Navy, Neve, whatever. He was always on the Dan Lurie magazine. I know Dan Lurie. Dan Lurie's a great guy. I love Dan Lurie. I got some good pictures of me. My boy, Melly Mel, and Dan Lurie. I'm trying to see if there's guys you guys would remember. Who's, oh man, Jose Guzman. Remember this guy? Remember that little guy? Remember that? Jose Guzman. Remember that? Remember him? Come on, you guys. You old school guys must be going crazy now. All right. We're going to have to freaking... I got to get going on here. We've already done like 20 minutes of this shit. By the way, last picture. Look at this picture. That's Tom Platts versus... This is the Olympia that year. That's Tom Platts. This is actually 81 Olympia. All right. So that's Tom Platts versus Franco Colombo. It's Tom Platts right there versus Franco Colombo. Franco Colombo's one chest had a, di a bitch tit on it. And there's, the, there's, there's Platts. I think Platts, Platts beats him. That's Tom Platts versus Franco Colombo. I never saw bitch tits. I saw him on Hubert Metz, and then I saw him on uh, on uh, Franco Colombo. It's funny because the old school guys didn't really, because bitch tits wasn't a big thing back, back in those days. Today, forget it. Well, the reason why today you don't see it as much either is because everybody gets their bitch tits cut out. Fucking guys. Anyway, all right, let's, let, let's get busy. All right, I got to get to these questions because otherwise I'm not going to have enough time. All right. So, Joe Toth wants to know, uh, he wants you to know if I could go over some old school split routines using compound movements for mass building. Okay, listen. Let's let's talk about the 1970s. You know the and you know the early 80s, whatever way of uh, training. Okay, I I, I got to tell you something. When I was younger, I believed all the bullshit. All right, like. Uh, you know, to get big, you got to lift heavy and do the, you know, the, the basic movements, the compound, whatever, you know, you want to call, you know. And you have to, to get cut, you got to take, you know, lightweight and just do a lot of reps with it. None of that's true. That None of that is true. I've learned over the years that's pure bullshit, okay? Because basically, there's heavy basic movements, okay? That's what I call them, heavy basic movements. You know, your bench, your deadlift, your squat, you know, things like that. And if you want to do cleaner jerk or any of those kind of things, I believe leg press, uh, hack squat, uh, you know, maybe press behind the neck. But uh, I don't think, you know, aside from that, Lee Haney used to call, like, you know, basically isolation exercise, rhythmic Rhythmic exercise. So in other words, what am I trying to say? I'm going to get put it all together in a second. But when you're doing, uh, like for instance, a concentration curl, nobody cares how much weight you use on a con. There's no like concentration curl like contests. You know what I mean? Like powerlifting contests. You know who can concentration curl the most, or who could do the heaviest cable crossovers. <laughs> nobody gives a shit. 
And a lot of times I see guys using weights that they have no business using. Strength is relative. Do you understand that? Strength is relative to the person. Jimmy the Bull, my friend of over 30 years, okay, could stand here and do exercise that nobody else could do because he just had that in him. His tendons were strong, his ligaments were strong, okay, and he just had it in him. There's other guys who could Listen, who had one of the greatest chests ever? Right? Surgeon Oubre, he had a fucking incredible chip. He couldn't bench more than like 315 at the most. And this is when he was a big guy. Okay? But he, he did it clean, and he did it strict, and he responded. Because why? The genetics, no matter who, I don't care who says genetics don't play a part in everything. Of course they do. Of course they do. Alright? And even with strength. These big behemoths that you see in these winning these like Arnold Strongman shows. I'm going to get to the old splits. Simmer down. Give me a second. But these big guys, I have to get this out first. These big guys that you see like slinging weights. First of all, some of those guys are fucking 400 pounds. Okay? I've been there. I mean, I was with Brian Shaw. The guy's fucking like 10 feet. You know, this guy like 2 feet on me. You know what I mean? I'm 5'6". Five, I'm five, I don't know. He's got, he's got to be, what's he like, 6'9", six, 6'11"? Six, I mean, he, I stood on a chair next to him. Do you understand? And I was still, he was still taller than me. These guys are big. Do you understand? They're big. So if there's, you know, if they're 400 pounds and they're benching, you know, 800 pounds, you know, they're doing double body weight. My friend Joe Steinfeld, okay, who's one of the greatest uh, uh, lightweight powerlifters, he was, he was 114 and he used to bench like fucking 300. You know what I mean? He benched triple body weight, you know. So, uh, uh, he's done triple body weight, so whatever that is. You understand he benching the 300s. So, technically, who's stronger? I mean, he's doing triple body weight, they're doing double body weight. You know, when you weigh 400 pounds, of course you can sling around shit, you know what I mean, a little bit more than another guy. All right? It's like Jeep Swenson. You know, I've seen Jeep Swenson take like a 25-pound dumbbell and throw it across the room, a 40-pound dumbbell, throw it across the room when he was pissed off. You understand what I mean? He threw it like it was a softball. But Jeep Swenson weighed like 420 pounds. You understand? So for him, that was like throwing a five pound, you know, across the room. You know, for me, you know, back when I was, when I saw him do that, I was like maybe 162. I wouldn't have been able to do that shit. I couldn't even do, when I was 278, I might have been able, I swung, a, I once got pissed off at somebody and I threw a 45 pound plate like a disc, you know what I mean? That's neither nor there. And that's being a dick, really. I was, that was me being a dick. Point what's the point to all this? Heavy is relative. You don't, you don't have to lift heavy weight to be humongous. That's all not true. A lot of, there's a lot of guys who can't lift heavy weights and are huge. Now, you got a guy like Ronnie Coleman, he'll stand here and take T-bar rows and do 450 pounds and do like 15 reps, but that's because it's light to him. Do you understand that? It's light to him. If your three-year-old daughter walked over to a dumbbell rack and took a 25-pound uh, dumbbell and put it over her head, you'd be like, oh my God, a three-year-old taking a 25-pound dumbbell put it over there. That's like, like, like Hercules, you know what I mean? Why? Because she, you and I, 25-pound dumbbell, you'd be considered a pussy doing it. Because it's relative. She's three years old, five years old, a girl, putting a 25-pound dumbbell, she weighs their 25 pounds. That's like you taking, uh, if you're a 200-pound bodybuilder, it's like you taking a 200-pound bodybuilder, you know, a dumbo just putting it over your head easy, standing there, pulling it off the rack and going like that with it, you know. I know what you're saying. I can do that. I can sit back. And, and you're all juiced up and all this. Other shit. The little girl's not. So shut up. Anyway, listen to me. So now, let's get into the splits and everything. In the 70s, I think what made, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the pro bodybuilders, the big guys, okay, I was around, I was in the, I was competing, I competed in 1976, they did not do the lightweight, but that's all bullshit, you don't train for mass, you diet for mass, yes, of course, when you're eating a lot of food and you're kind of a chunk, you know what I mean, you're a little chunky and shit, and you're a little big and you're juiced out of your, you know, gourd and you got all the androgens going through, or even if you're natural, and but you're, you're off season, so you're a little bit bulkier, of course you can lift more weight. Come on, it's, is that raucous? Is my shocking you with hearing that or, you know? No. But when you're dieting, you can't, you know, on calorie restriction, you're not going to be as strong. 
okay? Because you're dieting and your body weight's down. And so the training should stay the same, but the diet takes place of what's going to get you cut, all right? It's that training that makes you cut. I see these guys in the gym, and they're over here doing like tons of fucking twists, and they're doing weighted fucking like side bends and all this shit. You're an idiot. You're an idiot if you're doing that. That's not going to make your waist cut. You're adding... Re I've said this before. I'm going to tell you again, okay? If you start using a lot of weight and you're doing side bends and you're doing all this twist with heavy weight and all this shit to get your obliques, you're building obliques. My friend did that and he put like two inches on his obliques. He had to stop training abs altogether. It happened to Rich Gasparri. Rich Gasparri shrunk his waist by not training it for 10 months before his show. Okay? I'm not saying don't train your waist. I'm saying do enough to keep the muscles sharp. Okay? If, if, if adding resistance, okay, like this, you're doing a bicep curl, right? Resistance training, okay? If that makes your bicep bigger, your bicep's made of the same thing your obliques are. So adding resistance onto your obliques is going to make obliques like this. And if you're on juice, that's why some of these guys got a 40-inch ripped waist. It's not cute. Okay? So you have to understand the concepts of this, of what I'm talking about. Everybody thinks the old school, how did you train for mass? Joe Toth, who asked me this question, you train for mass by training, making the muscles work, making the muscles, muscle size is adaption to stress. Do you understand it? Like a callus on your skin, your skin's nice and soft, like a girl, you go out there and you get a new job and you're out there doing construction every day, you're digging ditches and what happens to your hands? They get thick and hard like rocks and shit. Why? Because the skin has to adapt. First you get blisters, then they turn into calluses, right? Because the skin has to adapt to that workload. You're no longer sitting at home, you know, doing homework with a pencil, not, not doing anything with your hands, you know? Now you're, you're out there doing physical work, so that's what happens. Well, it's the same thing in the gym. When you work out, you put stress on a muscle, it grows back bigger and stronger to adapt to that stress that you're putting on there. So if you want to get bigger, doesn't mean you have to lift heavier weights with lower reps. Make the muscle do the work. What did I just say? I just said make the muscle do the work. All right? That's how you get big. There's plenty of big bodybuilders. Arnold was one of them. Arnold was one of them who was not real, real strong. Franco Colombo could outbench Arnold under the table. And Schwarzenegger weighed like 40 pounds more than him. Okay, Franco's short. He was a lot shorter than me. I, I, I met him in person like 5'3", you know what I mean? And he was small, small for the frame, wasn't he? He didn't have broad shoulders or anything. Arnold was big. Okay, but I'm just telling you, it, it's, it's all relative. Everybody's body is different. Depends on how much red fiber you have, you know, fast twitch or slow twitch, or white fiber, all that, and a combination thereof. And only you can find that out, okay, where your body, uh, you know, adapts to that, okay, so, the old school way, uh, you know, back in the days, it was more the splits, whereas guys would, like, I did it too, because it was the 70s way, train each body part three times a week, all right, um, I did it like Arnold did it, I did chest, back, and shoulders one day, you know, biceps and triceps another day, and then legs, like that, chest, back, and shoulders, biceps, and triceps, legs, you know what I mean, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I would do the biceps and triceps with the legs on one day, you know, I, or you would do it like chest, back, shoulders, uh, uh, Greg, come on, spit it out here, chest, back, and shoulders, biceps and triceps, okay, with legs, then chest, back, and shoulders, biceps and triceps with legs, then chest, back, and shoulders, then biceps and triceps with legs, capiche, okay, Schwarzenegger did something similar to that. Now, some guys, which, now I've changed my whole thing from back then. I started doing then, you know, chest, back, and shoulders. I split, I did each body part twice a week. So then I did chest, back, and shoulders. I did biceps, and triceps, then legs, then chest, back, and shoulders, then biceps, and triceps, then legs, then off. Okay. I did it like that. That was throughout the 80s, but that's, I was young, you know what I mean? And that's the way the training was back then. That's the way people thought. Now today, 
I'll do each body part, and I'm still pretty fucking built, you know, especially considering, you know, uh, I cycle on, uh, um, what do you call it, the TRT with a doctor, so he has me six weeks on, six weeks off, six weeks on, six weeks off, and then when I had the throat cancer, I couldn't do it for like a year, okay, this ain't him, neither him nor there, because it doesn't, the, the, the little TRT that I do, the 200 milligrams, doesn't do fucking jack shit, it doesn't do anything to me, I mean, the only thing I get is a good sex drive, it helps, you know, the mind a little bit, and it, it really, you know, the joints, you know, I don't get any joint pain and shit, I had more joint pain when I was in my 40s than I do now, I, you know, I mean, knock on friggin', knock on ceramic, but, so, that's that, now I do each body part once a week, and I will, if I was to do two, like on Saturdays, I'll do, uh, uh, I, the guys from my gym that are watching this know what I do, I do back and then biceps, okay, I would, if I was to do now, like those things, I would do basically push pull because I like you know I do realize that you know sometimes Arnold would you know do different things like that too but pretty much he stuck with you know the basics from back in those days everybody's different Joe Joe you're gonna have to find out what's right for you there's no way if I gave you Arnold's here's Arnold's workout right here this is it right here you got it and you did Arnold's workout you may not get the same results he got you'd be like dude I'm doing weight for weight rep for rep set for set and I look like shit, and look what he looks like. That's because it's not right for you. It's just like Arnold tried doing heavy duty, and he said the worst thing that can happen to a bodybuilder happened to him. He gets smaller and smoother. But the Mensa brothers, people like Dorian Yates, and those, those guys, heavy duty type training, okay, there's some people, no, he did not, Dorian did not do Mike Mensa's training. Yeah, he did. He did a version of it. They all do a version basically of Arthur Jones type stuff. They all learn from that fucking guy. But regardless, it's, you know, lower sets, destruction of the, you know, like, man, a second lasts you five minutes. I've already told you about that. High and a hit, all that kind of stuff. So everybody's different. Some people respond best to that. Me, I'm a John Defenders guy, you know, like like uh, Steve Mahalik. You know, it's lots of sets, lots of reps, things like that. And that's the, what got me to where I got. And Joe, that's what you're going to have to find out. Because the old school way really is more, it's more high volume. A lot of, they, they train more frequently during the week, but you don't really change your training for a contest. You know, unless you can't, you're just having trouble pushing anything because your calorie restriction causes that. Then you might have to do something else a little bit more, you know, because you can't get any kind, but you still have to put resistance on the muscle. It's the same. It's not the training that should change for mass building or for getting ripped. It's the diet. There you go. Jared B. wants to know, is it okay to cheat? To cheat when doing certain movements. Is it okay to cheat when you're doing certain movements? Yes. It is, of course, it's okay to cheat uh, when you're doing certain movements. It depends on how you're cheating. If you're over there swinging like this and that's it, you know, you can't, and that, that's no good. Okay? That's no good. I went to a phase like that when I was young. But, um, no good. Okay. I do, which I basically learned this from Samir Banu. Okay. Because I was watching, he would do cable crossovers and come up like this. And he would have like a little bit of a, like what I call a rhythm. You know, and, uh, and, and, and that's what it is. It's a rhythm. It's almost like a rhythm. Even with cable rolls, if you ever see Arnold, he would snap back and he would kind of like, boom. Like, he would use a little bit of a rhythm. Okay, uh, Arnold did it with curls. You ever see Arnold curl? Picture of curls. Arnold's back like this. He's not standing up against the wall all strict like this. Because sometimes when you try to do, it, you still got to get the full range of motion. It's still all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. It's still that. That doesn't change. But some people, I which I can do the same thing. Get a little bit of a rhythm. The rhythm kind of helps you go. I I don't know how to explain that to you. Okay. There's a difference from cheating. I, I've seen cheating from guys doing, you know, bench where they come down like this, you know, and that's not, that's not, that's stupid, okay, because you're not getting a full range of motion. You can't do bench. You can't go like this, start here, and come down here, and then push back up, and come down here, and push back up. We've all seen those guys that do those half movements. That's, 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 that's not what I'm saying is okay. That's cheating. That's bullshit, okay? I'm talking about... You know, in, like a rhythm, you know, if you were kind of like, you know, like ah, all the way up, all the way down, like that. If you were doing pull, sometimes a little bit of a rhythm.
can be there, but you can't just cheat and no matter what I do, it's got to be full range. Just think of leg press. You see these guys coming down right here like this with fucking 30 plates on each side. They're coming down here like this, and then they go back up, and then they're coming down here like that. That's not leg press. This is leg press like that, all the way up, all the way down. So, I, the rhythm thing, which Samir Banu, when I talked to him about it, you know, it's 1981, 82, you know, when I was in Gold's Gym, and I'd see him in there, and I'd watch him and stuff. And who's going to argue with him? It was Mr. Olympia. Like, a year or two later, he won Mr. Olympia. But, um, he was right. I could see it. The way he did, the way he kind of, you know, he didn't stand there all strict like this, and, like, doing cable crosses all strict like this. You know, he didn't do that. He kind of, like, you know, boom. He had, like, his, like, almost like a, like a rhythm. And that comes with, uh, I think experience. I don't think you can teach that to somebody. I think that's something that would experience after years of training. Because I know in certain things I'll do that. Okay. Um, I, I got to get in the gym and show you guys some stuff. Because the stuff I do that I think you would benefit you. Like I showed Paul DeMeo this. You know when I was like I stand sometimes when I do the pull down. You know lat pull down. Right. I'll actually stand. You know. Like with the back. I make the back go. Whomp, 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 and. You see my back, bro. My back is jacked. Partially genetics, obviously, but I also know how to make that muscle work right. I don't. I'm not worried about weights, bro. I'm not in there to impress everybody. Look how much weight he could do on lat pull downs. You know, nobody gives a shit about that. that's a, as Lee Haney would say. Like I said before, that's a rhythmic exercise. Okay, that's a you know that's a secondary exercise or. You know, in isolation, you're not standing there to see how much you can pull down. You understand? All right? You're standing there to make the lats pull that muscle and do the work. That's the goal. That's the goal. Swole is the goal. Size is the prize. It's game to clock, motherfucker. Let's go. He's a good guy. Anyway, um, so, there, you know, cheating has its place. I mean, Schwarzenegger used to, you know, when he would curl, he would have this little, you know, he where he would... Kind of like, it'd be almost like a, a, you know, a little bit like this, but he never, but all the way down, he started from down here, you know, this is our bicep, and then all the way up, okay, that never changed, you get these other guys going half down, half up, you know what I mean, doing these like ridiculous, or you ever see idiots standing with their back against the wall, and they're like, I'm trying to do it really strict, you're more worried about keeping your back tight, and this and that, and your brain is not getting in your bicep. You're worried about standing there doing strict like this and shit, or I see these people with the, with the cable, right, with the, doing shoulders, right? They take the dumbbells, and they stand there, and they're like, that's not doing, look at look at the little fucking, little arc, like that, that. no, bro, you gotta come up, and then, you know, I can't do it here, you're gonna hit the American flag. So, uh, what the hell was I saying? Oh, yeah. You know, when I do it, I do it. All. You got to do the arc, bro. This should be this huge arc to do your, your, your shoulders. But you can't stand there. <laughs> like that, you know, <laughs> you're too worried about being stiff and strict and everything. You're not getting there. You got to worry about, dude, you know, you want a rhythm. You know what I mean? You ever see guys like they do have, a, some guys have a nice rhythm going. And that comes from training for years. It's something that you get inside you. Who asked me this question? Jared, 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 go to Subway. No, um, just kidding. Um, that, 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 that you know, comes from years and years of, of, of training. You kind of learn that, you understand? I, you know, I mean, I, I believe in doing everything full range of motion. I believe in doing it strict, but have a, you can have a little bit of a rhythm in certain exercises especially, Okay. There are certain exercises I have a rhythm. I, some, some exercises I don't even realize I'm doing it. But it's a slight rhythm. It helps me like a machine. I'm like a piston, you know what I'm saying? With certain things. I, I guess it's a, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm fucking boxed in a corner. You know. Because I need help. Mental help. Um, you know, I'm boxed in a corner. By the way, look at this magazine really fast. Look. That's, look at that. That's Boyer Co. with a beard. Look at that. Boyer Co. with a beard. What year is that? Uh, 1983. Boyer Co. with a beard. There you go. Right there. Boyer Co. Look at the body doing him. Look at that. Boyer Co. with a beard. 
Can we see more of that? Yeah, but not today. All right, so I think you get the idea about the rhythm and all that stuff, okay? There's difference in cheating. You know, as long as you get the full range and you make the muscle do the work, if you need a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of rhythm is good for the soul. All right, enough of that shit. All right, guys, listen to me. If you like this video, subscribe here. You, uh, Muscle Sport Mag. You can go to Chaos Nutrition. Obviously, I think that he has his own channel, Chaos. Uh, subscribe there. You can subscribe to my channel, Greg Valentino is a Momo. No, that's not really, it's Greg Valentino. But um, but listen, if you like this video, go to Chaos Nutrition. All right, he's got a lot of supplements over there. He sells. It's, that's what pays for this video. Okay, none of this shit in the back. So forget about that shit. It's Chaos Nutrition. Now, I don't have any of his supplements. I don't know what the hell, you know, I know he sells supposedly a really good pre-workout. So if you need a pre-workout, pretty much a lot of them, you know, are close to the same. Support him, you know. So we got to do. All right? I love you guys. Now, if you guys want to hear, like, certain questions you have, old school stuff, you want to see something, maybe even ask me about an old school guy, don't give me some guy, Joe Matarats, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 you know what I'm saying, Bajigalup or some guy like that that I don't, you know, I, you know, I never heard of. But if I, if it's old school guy, it might be, I might be able to help you with some of that stuff or tell you, or maybe I have a magazine with him and I could show you what he looked like, you know, because that was pretty cool. I think seeing the Lee Haney and all those guys going against each other. I mean, you had, you know, Lee Haney, Bob Paris, you know what I mean? You, you had um, Tim Belknap, you had friggin', uh, uh, you know, Mike Christian, you know. Oh, Matt Mendenhall, all these guys were in there. You know, I usually see Rory Littlemeyer in there, but I didn't see him in those pictures. And that's his mag That's the magazine he's always in, which I'll have to show you some Rory stuff because he was one of my favorite bodybuilders ever, and that guy was... Phew. Yeah, see him in person. You see him, seeing some of these guys in the magazines, don't do, you, don't do them justice. I'm just telling you, Mike Christian in person was just a monster. It's like Rory Littlemeyer, monster. You know? Rory Littlemeyer had that sleek... Physique though, sleek. I like that. I like that sleek look. You know, when you got the big shoulders and big bald arms like this, but then a tiny waist. You know, it's funny because you know Serge Nubre, to me, never looked great when he posed. He looked great just standing there. That's it. Just don't even move. Don't pose, Serge. Don't pose. Okay, just stand there. He looked. That's when he looked his best. Just standing there. But when he posed, sometimes I felt like he wasn't as good. Wait a minute, let me see. I don't want to be kidding. What the fuck am I doing? I'm stupid. I thought I saw a picture of him in here just posing, and he didn't look too good posing against somebody. And maybe it was at this man. Oh, look here, Bill Pearl. Right there. Look at that. Bill Pearl. Bill Pearl, right there. Look at him. Look at that. Competition training with Bill Pearl. Bill Pearl sat and talked my ear off with my partner, Paul. Oh, there's that leg press I tell you guys about. Look, right there. Right there. Look at that leg press. Look at it. Look at that leg press. Um, Bill Pearl uh, spoke my ear off of Pat Arnold and was bitching about him and shit like that. And then he, that same year, it's this, if you look, Google the year that Bill Pearl got the Lifetime uh, Achievement Award. Okay? The Lifetime. Look at Roy Callender. Remember Roy Callender? Look at him. Look at This is the 81 Olympia. Oh, no. This is the 82, I think, because I see... Uh, Chris Dickerson, who I knew too very well, right there, um, look at Dennis Tenorino, remember Dennis Tenorino, look at him, oh! Dennis Tenorino, look at that, look at Dennis Tenorino, look at that, I said I wasn't going to do this, oh my god, who had a better, look, look at that, who had a better than Frank Zane, a better, um, I think I did. No. I had a good one. John Defendis had a great one. Uh, vacuum pose. It's phenomenal. I mean, I said I wasn't going to do this. Wait. Here. Look. Right here. Now look at. This is Tony Pearson who was just, uh, look. Wait. Let me, let me. That's not Tony Pearson. That was Sir Jim Brady. So this is Emmett, uh, I remember this guy. Emmett, whatever the freak his name was. And, um, Tony Pearson on the end. And, and right here is Serge Nubre. Now, this is the three of them, okay? Now, Serge Nubre, to me, looks the worst than those guys right there. Now, and I like Serge Nubre. Look at him. See that? Look at Pearson. Look at Emmett. And then, 
New Bray, look at New Bray. Where's his shoulder width? Where's everything? Where's his legs? Where's everything else? His arms? Look at it. Pearson wasn't even big, but this is back when Pearson was, you know, was, uh, you know, small and stuff. Before he did the Michael Jackson face and everything. And he looked a lot better than, um, he looked better, you know, than, than, sorry, let's, let me see, I, I like Serge Dubray. Let's, don't get me wrong, uh, I have pictures with him. He was a big guy and everything, but he looked good standing there. That was his thing, just standing there and slightly twisting like this, and he had that chest, and just the way everything looked, you're like, dude, don't even move. That was his signature pose, standing relaxed. All right. I said I wasn't going to, I mean, we can, I see, I can get into talking about this and looking at these magazines, you get all like a little kid again, then I look at these guys today, and like, you know, you know, and then he's like, fuck that shit, but those guys... Watching these magazines and seeing these magazines, man, just it just it just does something to me. Maybe not to you guys. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys. You know what I mean? Uh, again, you know, you, you look at this is Joe Weider's magazine. This became the this became the holy grail. This became muscle and fitness. You know, flex all that shit all spawned off of this magazine, right? And look, and it was your physique, and I, ha I have some of those too. Look, here's how guys used to train their legs. They used to use the leg shoe and stuff like that. Look at that. Look at that. And I showed you the squat. Look at that. That's 1959. Guys weren't really squatting like that, you know? Ugh. I said I wasn't going to do it. I, could I can keep going. And I know you guys would love for me to keep going. But I'll see you in the next video. Listen, I love you guys. CastNutrition.com, MuscleSportMag.com, MuscleSportMedia, okay? And Greg Valentino, I got my own YouTube channel. We all, we're all the happy family together, okay, guys? I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Put your fucking questions down here. I can't help you if you don't ask me questions. Gabish! All right. I love you guys. Stop looking around.